Hello. Hope everybody's doing okay today. It is noon on Tuesday, March 12th. It is uh, the day after the return from spring break. I hope everybody is doing well, and I hope that uh, you're uh, getting back into the groove of things, even with all of the um, time change uh, craziness, because again, your bodies will take time to uh, adjust to this. You're probably feeling it today. You will definitely feel it tomorrow, the next day. Um, again, it kind of ebbs and flows, takes your, your body a little while to get used to the change of time. But interesting little side note, um, scientists have done research on, uh, you know, circadian rhythms, um, human clocks, all this other stuff. And, um, one experiment actually found that if you leave people to their own devices and do not give them the sun and moon with which to tell time, uh, their bodies will set them to a 25 hour clock. And so the conclusions of that research were um, your body uh, is thirsty for an extra hour of sleep every day of your life. And that that's sad to think about because, you know, by the time you're old like me, you have lost out on so many hours of sleep that your body wants. Um, but again, just a nice little side note and a nice little uh, uh, diversion uh, when we talk about time, which, uh, as you know, is all relative anyway. And if you don't believe me, uh, just, you know, think about what happened Saturday night. And uh, all of a sudden, it's just another hour. Um, so uh, the midterm uh, is due Friday. Uh, uh, upload to the submission page uh, on humanities101.org. Uh, if you put the, uh, you basically enter in your name, your course information, um, uh, and the URL. And people have been asking about, uh, I've been getting emails, people enter in their website address, right? They cut and copy and paste their, their private URL for their U private YouTube video or their Google Drive that they've given me access to, right, through my email address. Um, and they're, they're concerned because it's not hyperlinking. It's not creating that blue text that you can click on. Because a lot of times when you go into Word and you type in www.humanities101.org and then you hit enter, it will auto format that text. On this website, it does not do that. It just simply takes the text, right? Because it doesn't want to start telling the website to go to this web page and do that and do that. You start throwing in commands like that to a computer and it's not going to understand what's the what's. So you just enter in your, you just cut, copy and paste your URL. And on my end, I'll have a clickable link. Okay. Um, I just want you to double check that that video is live, that the settings are set. And often I will contact students when they say, hey, I didn't get a grade from my project or the grade I got doesn't reflect that I turned in any work, right? Because they got a zero or something like that. I will simply say, okay, well, let's figure out what happened, right? Um, so again, I, I'm, I'm not going to um, assume that you are doing something nefarious when you contact me and say, I don't think you, you saw the right file. I have had... Um, I, I, I have had emails get crossed, right? You know, I've got two T's on the last, my last name. Sometimes that last T doesn't get in there. Um, and some people are saying when they submitted, it didn't have their, their number, right? It didn't have your, uh, your course number available and that's fine. I'll match it up. I'll go through and match up all the early ones. Now I was able to fix it about, uh, four or five days ago. I went in and just put in a section where you can enter in your section number. So um, there is that now. And there's also a section, there's an optional message section. So some people, um, you know, have put in their, uh, their course information there. Literally, I had some notes I noticed that said, you don't have my course section here. So I just went ahead and put it here. I'm in W, you know, or I'm in 101-94. Uh, okay. So um, again, the midterm is up there on the assignments. Uh, page, uh, if, if you should be, um, you know, in the kind of final stages of that midterm, if you haven't already submitted it, um, um, and I cannot go through, I, ca I can't go through and verify somebody just asked if I can verify that all the links work. Um, 
basically, again, I'll be sending you an email with your grade. Um, if you get an email that says you didn't turn in a project, that would be that the link didn't work, right? However, that was that would be when you email me. I have 240 plus students in here. I can't, I, I, I'm going to grade the, the papers um, and then I'll submit. So going through and checking all the links and then going back and then grading all the things, it, it wouldn't make any sense as far as uh, my division of labor. Okay. So I, I, I will go through as they, they come in. And another note on that is grading because people have already submitted things like today and they're saying, when are you going to grade? When are you going to grade? I will wait until after the deadline to start grading, okay? And I do that for a reason. Uh, so that way I can keep all the files um, together and I can keep them organized. And I know what I graded and what I haven't graded. You start splitting things into three or four piles and you don't know what the piles are. So I will start grading them all together. However, I can tell you that being that your project is this Friday, I'll be presenting at, at conferences all around the area. I will not be getting to grade your projects until later next week. I may get time to sit and watch some of them, right? Because I will be sitting in a hotel room at times. I may get a chance to go in and, and, and one or two here and there, but I cannot promise that intellectually, after a full day of conferences and discussing and talking and, and hopefully shaking hands with some, some powerful people so that I can get them get disableism on their radar too. Um, I may be spent, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to do you a disservice and I'll be honest. I am not going to drain myself and then sit down to grade because what does a grumpy teacher do when they're grading? I don't want to take it out on you. So I want to be in my best mood and in my best headspace when I sit down to grade your projects. Plus, the very nature of these projects is not a binary. They have a right answer, a wrong answer. Some of you will get very clever, and uh, some of you might even get cheeky with your answers. And so I have to be on my mental game to grade your projects. It would be much easier if this was an A, B, C, D, E kind of thing that I could run through a Scantron. But I make it harder on myself. It's okay. I, I, you know, um, so, and again, people are asking questions and if you'll see AJ, um, is dropping answers in the chat, um, AJ has all my answers. So AJ's helping me out. AJ is, you know, uh, my go-to here. So it helps with the answers. If you see answers in the YouTube videos from AJ, um, you know, myself, AJ, or even shy, um, we're all here to, to answer your questions, right? Um, crowdsource and community this thing. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see, what else did I need to talk about? I talked about the midterm, talked about the submission of the midterm, um, questions about the midterm and, and, and people are asking about a side quest. The mentions of side quests were last semester. I apologize for not taking out those mentions. You do not have any side quests. Don't worry about that. Um, don't, don't your, your, your participation midterm and final. Okay. So midterm, other questions about the midterm. I'll be answering questions about the final, the textbook, and everything else here in a couple of minutes. I just want to give a chance for everyone to answer their questions or ask questions about the midterm. And then also so that people at home watching later know that at this mark, right, at this time, about nine minutes into the video, Doc stops talking about the midterm and starts talking about the final. Right. So that way, when you come back to access this later, you can timestamp this. Right. Um, yes. And, and the question about, you know, participation. Yeah. You get participation credit uh, for, for answering questions. Right. Creating a, that community. Other questions about the midterm? I'm happy. I'm going to sit here and kind of, you know, I realized I was dressed like a minion today. So I dress like a minion for you all. Um, and even if I need to, like, watch this. Here, hold on. It's a little demented, but it still serves the purpose. Uh, a little mad-eyed Mooney uh, uh, minion, but 
I, I like it. it. It works. If only these were prescription. All right. Um, so, yeah, and people have asked about AI in the videos. Yes, totally. Utilize that. Um, <clears throat> I have been playing around with AI and seeing what, what it will do, and there are some, even some video editors that you can, you can, you could enter your script into one of these AI video editors, right? You've written the script, right? You've created, because it's, these, these are questions about you, right? But again, they're fantastical. Some of your answers might be a little odd. Throw them into an AI generator and see what kind of images come out of there. When you're describing yourselves as shapes and colors, oh man, I would love to see what the computer does. Um, and it may just prove the absurdity of AI video creation. But again, you could actually put that in the bottom of the video. This, all these images were created by AI, and this proves that the Turing test is onto something because this computer doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, again, and this is why people have asked, you know, about rubrics for this project. I simply have to have you finish the assignment. That is kind of, you know, it's kind of an A, like I said, an ACE kind of grading system. If you, you know, knock it out, if you just do it, your bare minimum, you're going to get a, a, a C or above. Okay. So everybody who turns something in is going to get a C or above. All right. How can you be sure I'm not AI? That's a good question. You don't know. Of course, I do plan on coming to campus. Um, I mean, I am on campus, but I plan on uh, trying to, uh, I'm going to look at the, the schedule for the restaurant um, on campus in April and try to have an open lunch. Um, so if anybody wants to come to the 501 or the 5101 restaurant there on campus, because a lot of people don't know that we have a fine dining restaurant on campus. I, I may have to limit, you know, I can't like, I'm going to open it up to everybody, but I may have to reserve space spaces and I might do multiple times, but I would like to meet with students that want to meet. Um, and we can have a, a meal, right? Um, and no, it's not pre-recorded. I don't know. You want me to do something? I can, I can do something. I can hold up the newspaper from today, just like in the old, olden days. Oh, wait here. It's what time is it? It's 1213 on Tuesday. Oh, it's 1213. I'm live. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, so if we answer the questions and have a black screen on the video, um, we would get full credit. You could get full credit. Yeah. But again, it's not, you know, I, I often have said, you can have the words on there. I would prefer not a black screen because you want to think about, you know, delivering the message in an audio visual format. Um, but there may be a reason that you have a black screen. I would want to know why. And again, if you're worried about your privacy, if you're worried about your protection, um, use images, do a, 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 you can actually go into PowerPoint, create a PowerPoint presentation, do voiceover and then record you voicing over the PowerPoint presentation as you're going through the slides. I mean, there, there are tons of ways. Um, again, I had a, one student who was saying I'm entering in my stuff into Sp uh, Speechify or whatever, Speechly, um, and I'm going to have the voice read it to me, right? Um, so yeah, or the voice, I'm gonna have some, a famous voice read my, read my script. Okay, any other uh, midterm? And I'll get off talking about the uh, midterm and we can say the 15 minute mark then is when we start talking about the final. And again, I'm just going to introduce the topic. I'll be posting some videos um, uh, and some information as we go. And with the final, as opposed to the midterm, which was all about you, uh, the final is all about society. So I'm going to be taking you uh and, and your thoughts and we're going to be uh applying them to larger society and there is a course text the course text is academic ableism all right this text is available online 100 percent for free you can get the pdf version which if you have a uh a, a kindle reader things like that you can you can download um, you could even print that out if you wanted to, right? If you wanted a hard copy, you could print it out, three hole punch it, stick it in a notebook. You can order the physical book, okay, which is a fairly inexpensive 
uh, book in and of itself. You can get it from the library if you want a physical copy. Um, and then there's also a link to a free audiobook. So if you want to make sure that it sticks, download both of them. If you have time to listen, it is the same as reading. For some of you, it's better than reading because what you see with your eyes doesn't stick as much as what you hear with your ears. Some of you, both. I, I like to do both. Um, I learned that as, an, as a literature student uh, with Shakespeare. I used to go and get the, the old VHS films from our university library of the BBC Shakespeare plays, right? Which would be line for line. And while I read Shakespeare, I would have that playing in the background. So I would read along at the pace that was being kind of projected behind me, like on my TV, but it helped me understand because I could get the pacing and the rhythm and somebody else was technically reading it to me. My eyes were just following along, but my brain, ho oh, the fact that my brain didn't have to think about what the words and making sense of them, that somebody else behind me was reading them. My brain was able to make connections. And my brain was able to go, oh, that's funny. <laughs> I get that, right? So it actually unlocked, like I leveled up, so to speak. Um, and uh, again, it adds another layer. So you could read along with this book and listen at the same time, okay? Um, so academic ableism, and there are four chapters that we're going to be reading from this book, okay? So if you want to um, start now, um, you're going to be reading um, the four main chapters of the book, which are Steep Steps, The Retrofit, Universal Design, and then Disability on Campus. So it basically separates the idea of disability into past, present, and future. The ivory tower idea of the past, the retrofit idea of the present, and the future of possibly a universal design. And then I want you to read the very interesting chapter that talks about movies, about college, and then how disability is usually presented in those films. Um, because I think that that's kind of an interesting Okay, sorry about that. Microsoft did something. I'm gonna to try to start my cam. There we go. Okay, yeah, it just froze up on me. Um, so again, uh, representations uh, on film, and, and those are important as well because um, how society views things through a lens that isn't experience um, is very important. Okay, so, uh, so this book deals with social, architectural, education, racial, gender. It deals with a whole bunch of different issues as to how we have separated normal from abnormal, um, typical from atypical, the way in which we define good and bad in people, honestly. Some of the things in this book might shock you, all right? Uh, but this is truth. This is the evidence. This is what we know. Um, this book was published in, 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 uh, out of a project at the University of Michigan. Um, this is part of a series. This is why these things are free um, and uh, an open source. Part of that is universal design, but the other part is this history needs to be known. Um, and so the fact that we don't know how we know exactly how many calories we need to eat in order to survive. Um, the fact we don't know exactly how certain medical treatments and certain medical advances happened at maybe the hands of torturists, right? Um, so this is um, something going forward that we're going to be looking at, but we're going to be looking at in, a, in an idea of making a positive change and thinking about ways that we 
in the world can see innovation. We can see inclusion. We can see community, right? So um, for the final, we're going to be uh, spending uh, the next couple weeks uh, till you know early April reading through the text and talking about ableism, disableism, normal versus abnormal, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to be posting some, um, some lectures type videos uh, and I'll be sending you emails and updating you. There will be the live lecture, but there's going to be some more material that I'll be sending to you, um, and, and making available to you so that you can start to understand some of these ideas and dive deeper into the topic that we're talking about. Um, I'm making some of this content right now. Um, I was dealing with uh, something even in my professional life where I was being asked, okay, well, your disability, uh, what do you need uh, as far as your disability and why do you need it? And I said, oh, I'm writing that for my, the chapter that I'm working on for a book right now. So here, I'll just cut, copy and paste the text for you, right? So I, it, 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 I didn't even have to answer the question. I, I was already answering the question. So I, I'm going to be sharing some of that material with you kind of before it's going out anywhere else um, to kind of fill in some of those blanks because um, AJ, Shy and I are always working on creating that material. That's what we do at the Humanities 101 Foundation part, which is my, my kind of uh, my side gig, uh, which isn't really a side gig. It's, it's again, just teaching, um, but it's, it's, it's opening that up to a larger, larger audience and uh, talking about disability, okay? Um, so that's, that's why I'll be in dc uh there's also an uh, there's also in i know in april because it's autism awareness month uh there'll be a lot of uh other opportunities that you can come and hear me speak um even virtually um and i'll be making you aware of the the free ones because there's no reason to pay for it you you know it's, it's ridiculous so there are a couple free opportunities and, and and if you're in genesee county i'll even be speaking at the libraries here um during autism awareness month and likewise just so you know if you know of people in the local area that need someone to come and talk, I will come to you. So if you work at a company and they're like, hey, we want to do something for Autism Awareness Month, your professor will come. Um, all you have to do is drop the line, okay? Uh, we, we can make it happen. So I know a lot of you, um, you know, again, uh, uh, this is a personal mission, not just an intellectual and professional mission. So if you, if in April you have an organization or a group, I'll come you know, down to, down to Dearborn and speak outside the campuses as well. Um, I'll speak on campus too. I will speak to anyone who wants to listen about autism. I will speak to them about it. Um, so even if you want to, you know, set up a tea party in your garage with your stuffed animals and I will come and, and talk to them about that. Um, so, so final project, basically we're going to be getting into it and I'll be posting more details. I won't, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about the details of that because I don't want people's brains to be starting to think about the final before they actually get their mind around the information. So the first step for people who are asking questions about the final is to read, to listen. You've got four chapters, right? Start with the retrofit or sorry, start with steep steps, go to retrofit, you skip one chapter, you're at universal design, and then you're at your disability on film or disability on campus. Four. Uh, chapters. They're the middle four chapters. You skip the introduction, read two, skip one, read two, skip one. Simple. Okay. Um, but in, I want you to start reading this text and or, and or listening to it so that then when I start talking about what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be creating, you are going to be micro accommodating a part of society. Okay, and what I mean by that is you're going to be looking for a part of society that is not accessible or inclusive to one group or another. I don't care what group it is, but you're going to define here's a group of society. Here's a part of society that isn't accessible to them. Here is a way that we can make it accessible. For instance, small example. Um, and, and this doesn't have to do with disability or ability, but, but it's a small way that I, as a humanities professor, have for years micro-accommodated students at Henry Ford. I'm a coffee drinker. I'm an avid coffee drinker. And when I quit smoking cigarettes at, at first, I was, at, I was ah, 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 chewing gum, right? Well, there are certain times of the year 
that while I am not uh, a practitioner of a particular faith, eating and drinking in class in front of people who are practicing that faith might be a little uncouth. It might even be a distraction, right? And so I make note during that time to not do that in class, right? Um, and it's a small way that I can accommodate, even if people don't know that I do it. I mean, I point it out to you guys, but even if they don't, you know, they, that doesn't create a place in which they feel uncomfortable and don't know why. Because I would rather people feel comfortable and not have a cognizant reason as to why they feel comfortable than to know exactly why they're not comfortable in my space. And so there are ways in which we can, through universal design, and that's what's discussed in the book, and that's why you need to read that chapter first, because micro-accommodation is universal design. But it's universal design that doesn't scare people, because when you use the word universal, they think, oh my God, I've got to do everything all at once. But when you use micro, it sounds like I can do it. Right? One, one piece at a time kind of thing. Right? Um, so. The first step in uh, completing the final, if you are already, you know, midterms out of the sight, out of mind, and you're ready to focus on the next step, is reading. Okay, um, we have a uh, another lecture at the end of this month, I believe. Is that right? Hold on. No, it's at the beginning of April. The lecture is at the beginning of April. Um, and then another one at the end of April, I doubled up in April for that. So, uh, we will be talking in April at the, the live lecture. I'll be going more in detail about the final, what you're going to be doing, but you will also between now and then I will have posted some more content for you and I will have posted the details of the final project so that you can have read them before I talk about them and formulated some questions before it's thrown in your lap. Because I really hated as a student when a professor or a teacher would hand out an assignment sheet, give us about two minutes to read it, and then say, any questions? No? No questions? Okay. Turn it in tomorrow. And you'd be like, I haven't even had a chance to read this or devour it or even understand. What the, what, huh? No. No. So this is why I give it to you at least a day or two, if not a week, prior to me discussing the daggone thing. Because again, it's a way that I micro accommodate, um, you know, universally people that may, you may be great at it. You may be able to throw something in your lap and immediately read it and understand it, but you may be the exception. Um, and people are asking about when the finals do the, 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 the date is already up. Um, I do believe that the end of class. Hold on. I can, I can call up the, I mean, I, I posted this long before the semester began so that I wouldn't have to answer the question about when are these deadlines? When are these deadlines? Um, so if you go to humanities 101, uh, and you go to the assignments drop down, you will get the link to the, uh, the course text. You'll get an explanation of grading. You'll get an explanation of participation. You'll get all of that stuff. And you will also get the details of the assignments, um, including the deadlines. So if you scroll down, final project uh, is due May 1st by noon. It's there in huge font. I thought it was May 1st by noon, but I didn't want to say that and have people click me down on that because I've typed it so long ago I didn't, I didn't remember. So if you go to humanities101.org forward slash assignments, you will see May 1st by noon. So, um, and that would be, so that gives me enough time to grade your papers and have your projects in, uh, yeah, they give me May 6th to have your, your, your grading done. So that, uh, gives me time to get watching videos and some of you are making, you know, Zabruder films, which is fine. I'll watch 30 minutes. I'll watch an hour and 30 minute films. Um, but for the micro accommodation, uh, project, some people might get very, um, creative and I might have to, you know, again, I don't grade your projects and your, 
uh, papers and stuff under duress. Like I don't, I don't, uh, I give myself ample time so that when I get annoyed with things, I can walk away and not hit you. Because again, I'm not saying that any of you do this, but teachers who say that this doesn't affect them are lying to you. But if I read a plagiarized paper that is horribly written and maybe calls me a jerk in every which way, I get to the next paper, I am going to be emotionally affected. I might try to take it out on that person, right? So when I get dysregulated as a grader, I step away, I take a break, I come back to it when I'm mentally, sometimes it's that, that day, sometimes it might be the next day, but I give myself enough days that I can have the next day. And that's a, that's a micro accommodation I provide myself. So those deadlines are for me to get what I have to get done because un, whether you know it or not, they give us, you know, they tell us grades are due by this time. And if you don't get those grades in, we ain't paying you and all kinds of stuff. So, but I, 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 you know, I know that I, like you sometimes like to procrastinate, put things off. So I set my deadlines a week prior. Because I know that, you know, as some of you know, with updating the website, I didn't get it done quickly enough. And you were like, why haven't you updated it? And I'm like, I really want to, but there are so many things going on, right? Life is happening around me and I've made a choice to focus on that and not focus on this. Understand the consequences when you make that decision, right? As I do. But, you know, um, I still think that if you make a conscious decision, and you're, you're willing to open, oh, you want to, uh, take the consequences, um, even if they're not so, so great, but you're willing to take them. Maybe not, not that you want to, but you're willing to, um, then I think go through with that action. I, 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 I wrote a paper once that, uh, my professor said, um, it reads like a Rolling Stone article. And that was a rock and roll magazine back from the 1900s. Um, so he said, it reads like a Rolling Stone article. And I said, did you enjoy it? And he said, yeah, but you got a C. And I said, yeah, but I, you, if you enjoyed it, I got my job done. I wanted you to enjoy my paper. I don't care about my grade. I was writing that paper for you. I wanted you to get a chuckle. Did you laugh? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, cool. Then I'm happy. Like, that's what I wanted. I wanted to write a paper that would catch you off guard. I wanted to, you know, I knew what I was doing. I'm good. I'll take it. I'll take the C. Um, and people are asking about the final, is it a video? Um, we're, again, we're going to talk about the details. I don't want you to worry about the details right now in the next two weeks. What I want you to focus on is the information, understanding this information. Okay. Um, and so we can talk about it. We can have some discussions. Um, I will uh, happily meet with people. Um, if you want to get a group together on Zoom, if we want to do a Google meet, we can even do that. Um, or like I said, physically on campus, um, I I'm happy to, to get a space. We can get a classroom. We could have a, you know, a time and discussion. All you have to do is say, I want it done and I'll organize it and get it done. Um, those of you who have contacted me about zoom meetings, you know, that, um, unless you send me Friday evening and you say, can we meet now on zoom for the most part, we get that done within a day or two. Um, we meet on Zoom sometimes even that day. So, no, you don't have to post them on. You can you have to, you have to post them before March fifteenth on noon by noon, right? So do the project now. People don't wait. There, this is not this isn't something that you have to wait until the day. This isn't like a test. So other questions, other concerns, other issues. Again, um, I will, uh, I just wanted to reiterate for the midterm. Uh, the midterm is due this Friday. Um, you upload that on the submission page. Uh, and what you're going to be doing, uh, once you upload that, uh, your link will be sent to me and I will be, uh, I'll be accessing that, uh, within the next week or so. Okay. I did want to remind you though, that I will be in and out of communication 
from the time you turn in your project, like I'm leaving at noon on Friday. My daughter has a half day. She's going to get home from school. I'm going to uh, put her in my car, drive her over to grandma's, and then I'm driving to DC, right? Um, so I will be there until Wednesday of the following week. Uh, and, and so hopefully, you know, like I said, trying to make some good things happen for micro accommodations worldwide. Uh, but like, I, this is, this is a mission for me. So, um, I will not be in touch. Um, but please know that even if something were to happen and you're, it's 1159 AM and you're sending and the links broke and the links broke and you're freaking out and you're like, Oh my God, he's not going to take it. He's not going to take it. Yes. Fix the link. Send me an email before noon and say, the link is broken. I'm fixing it. And then send me the link the minute you get it fixed. Submit it on the submission page the minute you get it done. So uh, again, um, I trust you. If you want to abuse that trust, that says more about you than it does about me. And I'm not the one that has to sleep at night with that person. And I'm not the one that has to look that person in the mirror. So like I said, I have enough hard, hard enough time looking at this ugly mug in the mirror. I don't want to look stare at yours too. No, I'm kidding. Um, so any other final questions before we go? Um, yes. And people ask if the link doesn't work. Yes. I will probably contact you preemptively. If I go to your submission and I'm like, Oh, this link doesn't work. You'll get an email from me and go, I don't know why the link's not working for me. Can you send me a link? Right. And yes, people are asking about, you know, getting their mind around the final project. The first step is base information, basic background information. This book is the basic background information. It explains to you why we didn't allow disabled people out in public in the past, how we allow them out in public now, and maybe how we should let them out in public in the future. And if you don't know this, there are literal laws on the American legal books that state that you cannot be walking down the street if you have certain disabilities or a crutch or a wheelchair. You are not allowed in public. Beautification rules and ugly laws and stuff. That's their names. Fucking amazing. I love history when you get into it. All right. Um, uh, no, you submit the midterm on March 15th. Don't wait till March 17th. That's two days too late. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I was just making sure. I'm just teasing a little bit. Okay, so um, again, uh, midterms due Friday. Uh, start reading the text. I will be out of town, will not be able to grade. Um, keep in mind that, you know, if there are places that, you know, that could use some autism inclusion stuff, uh, April is that month, and I'm happy to come to you. Um, and also be thinking about if you need to meet in, in person, um, we can set that up. Okay, at the end of March, early April, all that stuff. And I will be sending out emails about um, if I'm coming on campus for, I mentioned lunches. I'm having lunches at the 5101. And when I do that, I will send out emails um, and it'll, there'll probably be like a, a, a sign up page or like an Eventbrite thing because I'll have to limit how many people just simply because of the tables that they have. Um, so I'll have to talk to the restaurant and say, how, how big of a table can I have? Um, because I know Chef Joe at the restaurant, and I have walked in there with a class before. And, and even though he's fine with serving 20 people as a walk-in, working has, having worked as, an, as a shoe chef, it is not something that you enjoy, having 20 people just walk in off the street, unaware, on a day that you have a special prepared, and all 20 people want that special. So I want to give him some heads up to have probably extra pizza toppings prepared and things like that, because there are certain things that he knows students are going to eat over others and he can prepare for us. So I want to let chef know that we're coming. And then also maybe he'll make me those sweet white beans. All right. Uh, any other, uh, because yeah, if you don't know, there is a fine dining restaurant on campus, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, lunch, 
um, dinner, I think on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, but now through the end of the year is when they do their buffet season and they do some amazing, amazing food there. And it's all student run through our culinary program. Right. Um, so which of which you can get a bachelor's degree at our school. So good stuff. All right. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Enjoy this weather. Enjoy yourself. I know this has been a long lecture and a long discussion, but I talked about all kinds of random stuff and I wanted to assure you that you're on the right track, um, that you're doing just fine. Um, this midterm due on the 15th, we'll talk about the final when I see you again. Um, and, uh, be watching your emails and I'll be watching mine. Okay. Have a wonderful day and a, uh, a great rest of the week.